So we're gonna start this one off in a bakery or a fern as you'll hear them called. We're gonna get in here and get a traditional Lebanese bread called manahish. It's uh, got many different varieties and types and differences, toppings you can get. We're gonna get a cheese and za'atar, which even that can vary as well. So let's get in here and uh, check it out. I haven't even walked in, I just walked around the corner and I got wafted with fresh bakery bread smells. Ooh wee. The, the bakery is called Forn al Asil. Forn means oven or forno. And they are one of the best bakeries in Biblos. We're gonna try the half time, half cheese. And it is tight corners in here as he's pulling things out of the oven. You almost get an elbow right to the face. You see right here, he's pressing the bread out. It's gonna fly in the air. Make sure to get that stretchiness really thin. So we're gonna get our manish with the wild thyme, or is what they call the zatar, and we're gonna get a cheese. It won't be one cheese, it's gonna be like a cheese blend. They're making it right now. Like I said, these are like the bakers for the city of Biblos. You can tell I've been here 20 years of expertise. It's moving around perfectly. Probably about finished now. We've been in there for about four or five minutes. This is your baby. Make a special dough. This is mine. You can try it. Thank you, my friend. Oh, yes. That aroma is just insane. I can't even, really, I must sound like a broken record how much I'm just talking about how aromatic the wheat product is here in Lebanon. Just wanna open it up and show you before we get after it. But you can see, got that nice cheese blend here. Look at that steam coming off there. That zatar, you see all the sesame seeds. I've heard in Lebanon, they do put some sumac with their zatar mixture. It looks like it's just actually that wild thyme and oil and sesame seed though. Let me put that back, wrap it, cradle it like a baby and try this out. I don't know if it's the way he's throwing that dough or what, but you get real nice thin crust pizza vibes here. That cheese got a little bit of stretch to it, but it's nice and salty as well. Mm. Wow. You get into the middle of this, you get to the zatar, and it just explodes with an aroma, tanginess, salty, with that warm, loving, stretchy dough, melty, oily cheese. This gets better when you work towards the middle. What's interesting is this doesn't develop like a cracker crunch on it at all. It's not been too crunchy. Maybe a little bit on the end, but really it's that elasticity, that gluten, that doughiness that's so appealing with this. Yo, I was just trying to get some B-roll and he brought me over a spinach one, a little triangular spinach one. A lot more of the flour mixture on it. It's a lot crispier. Cooked it a little bit longer almost. Wow. Mm. That spinach is deep, dark, rich, nutritious. Subtle sweetness coming from the tomato and onion. And then my gosh. What a tanginess from the lemon juice. There may be a whole lemon on there, if not more. I mean, just look at the beauty marks this thing leaves. Everything it touches is left with a beauty mark. Oh my gosh, that is a charred cheese though. I keep, I think I say the name of the trust. Manakish or Manahish? Manahish is the plural. Ah, that's my problem. 
Manouche is a singular. Uh, Manouche, yes. Ah, uh, see, that's my problem. That's why I keep thinking I'm saying it wrong. It's Manouche. So we're now down here in the old souks area of Biblos. Uh, you can tell this street alone, four to 500 years old. And Biblos is famous because it is one of the oldest cities in the world that was continuously inhabited, said to have started around 6,000 BCE. So there is a lot of history that's gonna go into this charming little city. So we've come over here to a castle that was built by the Crusaders and you, when you walk around Biblos you can just see little imprints of people who used to live here all throughout it. You can see little Roman temples but actually the Crusaders when they come used them to build an even stronger wall. You have Crusader wall but you had the actual little Roman uh, columns pushed in it as well. Now, y'all may know I'm not really a history buff guy when it comes to just like landscapes and cities and who ruled things and what, but when you really come to Lebanon, it, <laughs> it's, it's so intriguing because you see the, the Roman columns, you see the castle fort that the Crusaders built, you can see the mosque when it was under Islam rule. It's, I, mean, I think anybody can appreciate the beauty and fascination from all the people that once lived in this area. through this right here may forecast our future a little bit but those juniper berries they are aromatic uh, what a charming little seafood restaurant we're going to like nooked in a little corner right here you got the coliseums right next to it across the street as well Oops, let's get in here not fall down that it's good seafood. <laughs> Nice rustic place from like the cherry wood, the deep dark looking wood. The bowls, they're like coppered colored. It's dark and homey and very rustic feeling. But the head is low. This is uh, a mini sage bread. You can have some thyme and lebni. This restaurant's kind of fun. Uh, so we got the sage bread right here, which is a very uh, thin bread, and they've actually got the sage right here. It's hot, so you can take your bread, put it on. Uh, looks like they got some olive oil, sesame seeds, the lebni, which is a type of Lebanese yogurt. They really strain it out so it's nice and thick yeah. and hearty, and then some olives as well. Looks like good old flour tortilla. This thing is hot. I know from touching it. Clearly my first time I didn't fill up my bread. And that is Zatar with the oil. This is like how I would always order right here. They have one called mutabal, which is very similar to baba ganoush. It's the eggplant, the tahina, the lemon juice, and the olive oil. But you can see it's almost been mixed and mashed, slightly different. You just cannot go wrong with that mixture of ingredients. I really like how they've almost just forked out the eggplant and slightly mashed it. It's not pureed, but you'll get chunks of the eggplant, that tahina for the nuttiness, the richness, olive oil, that kick, and then the lemon juice really comes in at the end with a nice sour tang. I gotta go in for another dunk, a little double dunk. Sorry, Nico. 
This is arak. Arak? Yeah, just it's like uh, grape alcohol with anise, and we have it with our Lebanese mezze. It's a traditional Lebanese drink. Kesak. <laughs> Oh, that little shot goes a long way. Okay. Who? Ah, thank you. This is... They offered you this. But what is it? It's uh, cheese rolls we make. Okay. Uh, it's similar to spring rolls, but we filled it with cacao cheese and a bit of mozzarella, maybe. And we fry them. Mm. Mm. How'd you eat this already? I feel like it's way too hot. Not much to love about that. Intense, salty cheese, melty, stringy like mozzarella, wrapped in like a fried little filo dough almost. Add a bit of pomegranate molasses. That's pretty cool. Mm. Chicken liver, potato cubes with coriander, Lebanese sausages with uh, pomegranate molasses, and small bites of meat with apple and pomegranate molasses. Look at it. Oh yeah, sauces all throughout, tomatoes. It's easy to spin. It's like new fashion turntable. I got the fried livers in like a sauce, and I cannot. I gotta get the garlic aioli with it. I really did not need the garlic aioli at all. I kind of feel bad for doing it. Huge chicken livers, though. It's like a lemony, pomegranate, tangy sauce coating them. Or bacon. Philly flake and coriander fried potatoes. Dipped in garlic aioli. I'll stand no chance against me. Looks like you almost got like a, a beef bulgogi. They cut it up into little chunks, stir fry it up with the pomegranate molasses, apples, and there's something else in here. I think pine nuts. Whoa. <laughs> There's pomegranate molasses in there. Wow, that was tart. I don't think it's a competition at all. The livers are the best thing up here. Mm. Mint chocolate? Mm. Right, good. Uh, Y'all always wonder what I don't like. I don't like mint chocolate ice cream. <laughs> I feel like I'm eating toothpaste. I hate it. They give it here complimentary for dessert. Well, at least we got a cinnamon bark here as our spoon. I tried. I couldn't do it. One bite. Ugh. If you like mint ice cream, you like tooth eating toothpaste. You freak. Man, Biblos, that was wild. Y'all were super friendly. Uh, the bakery this morning and that place both comped a meal, so a big thank you. We are head to Patron now. And yes, I did try the mint ice cream. It was disgusting. Why would I ever want that when I could leave with garlic breath? 